Good evening, it's Kuro. Got a tier 8 game in my Harakaze. It's a ship I haven't featured in a while. Going over the matchmaking, double CV match with Lexington and Furious. We have an enemy Baltimore rounding out the radar threats and destroyers Lightning, Kagero, and Minsk rounding out the threats to my ship. The map is Estuary. It is a standard battle. And gonna kick this off. We spawned uh, center on the south. And typically, uh, anytime you spawn center in a DD, you've got uh, two options to make. Well, you've got the option of uh, what side of the map are you gonna try to work from, and two, are you going outside or inside? So here, initially, I am going to head to the east. Um, got a Z-23 New Orleans Bismarck out here. Um, I think there's a chance that this side might need more support with uh, the Z-23. Um, might be a little vulnerable to uh, their destroyer. So I'm initially looking to head out, out there and... Uh, see what I can accomplish um, we however get initial spots where it looks like we've got a the beginnings of an enemy death ball that's gonna be pushing through here so I'm gonna push up uh, reverse my course and start sailing as fast as I can back to the western side of the map to help support uh, the guys on the western side of the map. Now, Harakaze is not... She, she was a premium that was offered back under... Uh, I guess it was called High Seas Fleet or something like that. I'm, I'm not really into anime. I don't really know anything about it. I bought the ship because um, it has some very interesting... Uh, aspects particularly it's about three quarters of an Ak Akazuki uh, and it's still running uh, Shiratsuyu torps uh, meaning this this ship has a, a very interesting blend of uh, gun power and torpedo power uh, again I'm running torpedo reload on the ship uh, mainly because I like the additional firepower that Torpedo Reload provides. And with the gun figure configuration on these Japanese DDs, I typically don't need to smoke all that often. Um, right here, I'm pushing up. This is, this is an aggressive move, trying to uh, get Torpangles on uh, this enemy push. I'm kind of ideally placed. I'm trying to help out the Martell with uh, uh, with those Lexington dive bombers, but that's to no effect. So I am just going to focus on getting a good torque position here, um, tracking this North Carolina, and. Uh, Guy doesn't seem to be too interested in moving, so I'm just going to go ahead and send um, one set of torps out there. Now, I'm having issues here that all of these guys at this point know how many ships are coming this way. Why is this New Mexico still pushing? This lion, at least he's, you know, angled back kiting. Uh, it's telling me we're going to lose this New Mexico here shortly. Uh, New Mexico has no chance against Massachusetts and North Carolina, plus you've got a lion back there. Uh, it's just, it's not going to be pretty. Catch two torps on the North Carolina. Just going to throw some uh, torpedo reload shenanigans out there. and kite away.
While this North Carolina has got Torps inbound, I just want to try to distract him and uh, try to pull him into my Torps. I do pick up uh, an unrepairable flood on this North Carolina. I'm trying to burn this guy down because every time he shoots, he's probably inflicting massive damage on that North Carolina or uh, our New Mexico. So me also being visible is pulling focus off uh, our New Mexico trying to let him live longer but at a certain point I've got to go dark you know I can't let a, a secondary spec Massachusetts just sit there and shoot me all all day it's it's just not gonna work out well um, again our, our Jervis I think I believe that this is an aggressive move yes we did just really give the enemy team a bloody nose out here um, but I still believe they have more firepower than we do they've got uh, they've got the minx the Kagero plus the lion uh, you know plus that Massachusetts and that Massachusetts is healthy uh, we've got the Jervis myself a New Mexico and a lion and well there goes the New Mexico I don't like that this Jervis is sitting there in his smoke those uh, destroyers haven't been spotted in a while and uh, I think he's gonna and yeah Kagero pops up I expect that minx to jump on him too. I'm gonna start circling towards the uh, the Kagero to try to help out my Jervis. I'm expecting those destroyers to try to to jump him. There's the minx. I don't want to shoot right now uh, because I'll I'll be detected um, when I can't really shoot anything right now. So. I want to drop those torps on the uh, the lion, complete my turn, and then I'm going to engage this Kagero. Ideally, I'd like to focus my fire on uh, on the minx, but right now the minx is out of my field of fire. This Jervis is going to be going down soon. I'm going to pop my torpedo reload. And I'm just going to take uh, an approximation. I kind of figured that he's going to, you know, turn out and then start to turn back in now that the, uh, now that the Jervis is down. Probably thinking, oh, Japanese DD, easy kill. Uh, Kagero comes around the corner and spots me. I do pick up a torpedo on the Lion. And just going to keep focusing this Kagero. Uh, I am going to have to lose some of my DPM to, to angle away from the Minsk. Uh, the situation is I'm, I'm kind of cross-fired right here, so I just need to uh, keep rolling away. And my, uh, my thoughts worked out. The Minsk drives into one of my torps, and uh, this Kagero, in my opinion, screws up, smokes up, and I'm able to escape. Now, at basically everything I've been doing was to delay the flank. And, I mean, if you're looking, my team's pushed all the way up here. They're pushed up into here. Um, it's kind of... Excuse me. It's kind of equal right now. We are a ship down. But it's it's not gonna hold. This this game is uh, just constantly gonna be just slightly out of reach, and it's it's gonna be things like this. Like okay, this lion, all me and this lion need to do is just delay. I mean, you look okay. He's healthy. All right, we're we're solid. You know, I'm gonna come in here. I throw my torps out on this Massachusetts, and I'm waiting for this Kagero. 
um, I want to know where that Kagero is at. So I just start shooting. And that's telling me that this Kagero is nowhere in 9.4 kilometers. So I'm not detected. I'm going to throw some shots out here on this Massachusetts. Maybe I get lucky with some fires, something like that. But this is one of the things the Japanese DDs are good, using those stern guns to just fire over the edge of an island um, and not be detected. Z-46 is good at it as well. <clears throat> now everything was going good with my planned ambush until the lion just derped right through here and uh, pulls all the attention from the Massachusetts so <clears throat> my torp ambush here just blew up and even worse okay this Massachusetts is going to angle to the lion so the lion's not really gonna do much take a look at my lion he's turned out he's broadside to the Massachusetts that's telling me this lion is dead I don't even need to look at his HP. Well, well, you can see how, how well his plan has gone for him at this point. So, I am not too happy right now because I expected this Massachusetts to keep pushing right around this, this island and uh, walk right into a nasty torpedo ambush. Instead, I lose my only support out here. Uh, because the guy doesn't understand that be patient they they have to come to our cap you know all we need to do is sit here and defend they'll open themselves up to us eventually um, the lion dodges the torps that's telling me that I think the Kageros was somewhere out here excuse me I guess this is gonna be the last video tonight because I'm freaking fading uh, just by the way he, he turned in, either the Kagero's out there or this guy's running something like Vigilance or something like that. But again, just being patient. Distance, um, you know, is, is kind of my enemy right now. I want to suck these guys in. Now this, this could have, have worked if, if I would have timed this correctly. Um. I, I basically stopped and I'm counting in my head anticipating this Massachusetts to kind of push right through here and I'm looking at you know a, a completely blind torpedo salvo um, I thought this lion was gonna turn hard into to the cap so I dropped pretty much really short that turns out to be a mistake here uh, both of those whiff and unfortunately that's probably going to cost me, uh, well, it's, it's not going to cost us a game, but it's going to cost me a lot of damage. I fell back because I knew that I didn't get the Massachusetts. I wanted to get my concealment circle tucked inside the island, so if the Massachusetts came around the bend, I would be undetected and at this point I'm just surfing down the down the channel right here um, this is last stand stuff um, just I've got one more set of torps just trying to to find a way try to delay this as long as I can so I'm looking at the different targets, trying to select who's getting torps. Kind of throw a really wide fan pattern out there. I do get detected by the Massachusetts, so I'm just going to guns. And he's broadside to me, so I'm loading AP. I get uh, resets on the uh, Massachusetts. Switch targets to the lion. And just ducking back in here behind the island. Unfortunately, um, the Baltimore 
still alive. He pushes up. He's got me radar detected. I know I'm dead here, just trying to get the last bit of damage. Um, I end up going down. It was a good, well-timed push by that, that Baltimore through the channel. Um, if I would have lived, I would have come out around this back side of the island and there would have been some some more tricks I could try, maybe pull off a, you know, drop in torpedoes or something like that. The presence of that Baltimore would make it much harder on me to uh, to try to actually like re-enter the cap and actually stop the cap. Um, but I I would be able to launch more torps, be able to use my guns a little bit, uh, farm some more resets, and basically drag the game out a little longer but uh unfortunately that did not happen so kind of the lesson for this game is be patient guys even even especially when you're on defense you know uh don't throw your ship away you know if if you're outnumbered on a flank don't be caught bow in you know you every ship can kite away just fine you know, kite away, uh, you know, preserve your HP, get your shots in, and, uh, you know, do what you need to do. Um, you know, we just, we lost too many ships just because they, they allowed themselves to get overextended. We lost our, our main flank because, you know, guys would overextend and next thing you know, they're dead. The enemy, to their credit, had pulled a bunch of their ships back from their push to defend their cap. And then what was a, you know, superior numbers we had on the eastern flank, all of a sudden evened out, and my team folded. And that's pretty much how the cookie crumbled on this one. Um, I went on ahead, did 110,000 damage. Um and delayed the best I could, but, you know, it's, you can't win them all. So, I hope you guys enjoy the game. Uh, interested in seeing if there's if there's something different that you guys would do that uh, um, might be able to turn the turn the tide, or or maybe uh, drag out the uh, the defense of the the base longer. Um, interested in hearing what you guys can come up with so um, let me know what you think in the comments below i hope you're having a good night and i will talk to you later